Hello, everyone. Once again, a warm welcome to uh, the webinar today. Say goodbye to Excel Chaos, Simplify Planning and Forecasting. We're still getting the last attendees on board, but we will uh, slowly start up the webinar for today. Thanks again, all of you, for joining. Just a few uh, housekeeping elements before we go too far. So all participants are on uh, on mute. We would, though, really like you to ask questions. So please use the questions panel in the GoToWebinar. You will uh, find it in your, your GoToWebinars panel under questions. Please do ask a lot of questions, and uh, we will answer them at the end of uh, the session. We really want this to, uh, to be interactive. So yeah, please do that as much as possible. Today, you will hear from uh, myself. My name is uh, Michael. I'm a channel manager at uh, Jedux. With me, I also have my esteemed uh, colleague, uh, Wolfgang, uh, from our solution advisory team. And Wolfgang will be getting into a very exciting demo of Jedux. But before going into that, I uh, just want to uh, talk a little bit about the topic today, but also tell you a little bit about Jedux, if you don't know about us. So Jedux, our mission is to empower organizations to deliver adaptable plans that outperform expectations. We are working with more than two and a half thousand customers worldwide have more than 20 years of experience serving companies across the globe. But really one of the things that we are very proud of, proud of is the customer satisfaction. And that's not something that we're just saying ourselves. This is something that is also recognized in Gartner, Bach, uh, and other analyst um, surveys where our customers have, have rated us. And that's something we are, we are of course, really proud of and happy to, to work with all of our customers. Enough about Jedux, but on to the uh, topic of today. So avoiding Excel cares. And I just brought along a, a quite interesting uh, statistics here. So actually 74% of organizations are still reliant on Excel for budgeting, planning and forecasting. And of course, the point here is not that we should not use Excel. Excel is a great tool for many purposes, but I think the problem in this sentence is the word reliant. So when we solely rely on Excel for the budgeting, the planning and forecasting, there are certainly some, some pitfalls, some uh, issues um, that, that we need to address. What are some of the typical issues that we might see uh, when talking about being reliant on, on, on Excel? It might be uh, data leakage. That's something that 64% of organizations actually encounter, that data is leaked into online local files. And from there, where's the data going? We don't know. 75% also report that system are not integrated. It's difficult to integrate all these sheets with all the data sources that we have with our other solution. And this, of course, represents a challenge. We're not able to have one source of the truth. We're not able to take quick decisions. These are some customers that, that we are working with uh, at Jedux and, and what they were saying before they implemented Jedux as an FPNA EPM solution. So the fact that it was extremely challenging for finance to, to support all the multiple plans and forecast using Excel, that it was a very labor heavy uh, and very prone to error uh, process. And, and also that you know an Excel-based uh, forecasting budgeting system simply cannot cope with the growth of, of our company. And these are, are, are very, very typical challenges that we see. Digging a little bit more into why is that actually a, a problem, then if we look at a typical planning analysis reporting uh, cycle without Jedux, without a modern EPM tool, then it could look like this, where we have Excel, we are creating some templates, we are loading in data, we distribute our, our sheets out to colleagues that needs to type in uh, data, we need to collect the data, 
and monitor also are people actually typing in data are they typing in the right fields what are they actually doing we need to validate the submissions maybe here we actually need to go back once again distribute uh, secure the data collect the data and again monitor um, all of that before we can start consolidating the results doing our analysis maybe making adjustments and, and finalizing so a very long process a lot of manual steps uh, a lot of uh, steps where error can happen um, and and really a, a, yeah not a a good flow in terms of, of making uh, or streamlining our planning and forecasting. So what is it that we can do with, with JEDUX? Well, we can create a planning uh, model in, in JEDUX that we, of course, again, distribute to our users, but this time we don't send around a number of spreadsheets. The model is based in JEDUX. We use a workflow maybe to send out an email notification allowing the uh, planners to, in an online form or in an Excel form, to complete their planning process. In real time, we can pros progress uh, the monitoring. We can see what are people doing. Have they submitted their plans? We don't have to do any consolidation. This happens automatically. So instantly, we can analyze on, on our data. We can start our reporting process. So really, a lot of the steps we are taking out of the equation we are automating them we are removing more or less all the uh, elements where the manual errors could happen uh, and another very important and, and maybe one of the, the main things is also what happens in the middle here we have this data integration uh, we have a database where we actually store the data and not a number of, of local fly files that are flying around this is, of course, very important to have this one version of the truth uh, and, and something that's very important to, to streamline our, our planning process. If we take that a little bit further and look at, OK, where is it that JEDUX can actually help you, help our customers in, in their journey, then typically it starts uh, by simplifying the planning, the forecasting and reporting automating all of these repetitive tasks that we saw in the previous slides eliminate all the operational frictions and, and errors and our spreadsheet cares very typical starting point but of course we can do more with jedux we can help organizations collaborate across the organization we can eliminate silos align on strategic financial operational plans and we can gain insight to make the decisions that we need in, in the organization. We can even start uncovering hidden opportunities. Maybe we use all of the structured data that we now have together with uh, AI and machine learning to get predictions, what is going on in our business, and how can we plan even better um, for the future to really create value in our organization. With that uh, said, I want to hand it over to, to my colleague uh, Wolfgang. Uh, we want to have a look at, okay, so how does this actually look in real life in a JEDUX solution and, and how can it be used to, to avoid uh, the Excel chaos? So uh, Wolfgang, if uh, you're with us, um, can you take over the screen? Yes, I am with you guys. I'm just taking over the screen here. Um, I just want to confirm, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you and we see uh, your screen as well. Okay, cool. Good. No, great stuff. Um, yeah, it's great to have you all here in this webinar. Um, and I'd like to entice you to actually ask questions into the questions. Um, if we won't be able to answer them on this uh, in this webinar, we will definitely get back to you afterwards um, via email and help you with answering those questions. Okay, now what you can see here is an, a database. <laughs> we extracted this database from an SAP database. And what we want to do now is actually migrate this database into the cloud. And I've already logged myself into the JEDOX environment, the platform. And you can see here, I've got a lot of databases here for, um, for all my demo purposes, but we would like to migrate that database, which we just saw in Excel now, into the databases here. Um, now we do that with our JEDOX 
add-in. This add-in also installs, by the way, into your Word and PowerPoint, which gives you access to individual data sets that you can pull into Word and PowerPoint if you want to. <clears throat> but in JDOX, it's a little bit more powerful. We've got a few more settings and you'll get to see them today. Um, and here we've got that same databases um, modeler where we are going to migrate this database into now in the next few minutes. Um, we do that with our data-driven modeler. Now, what you see here is that it goes and analyzes and sees what data sets or what you know data structure have we got here and it recognizes there's a time dimension it has recognized a hierarchy for cost elements for the cost center it didn't quite recognize the hierarchy correctly so i'll just go and pull it together like that via drag and drop i could also use this um, setting here on the right hand side and i've also got an attribute name for cost center um, down here you can see booking data for drill through data um, that we're also going to pull in. The database is given the name of the Excel file, cube name, integrator name. We'll just keep all of that as is and say create. So what's literally happening now, it's taking this database from Excel, remodels it into the model that we've just created and pushes it into our cloud. If we have a look then now into our cloud here, let's just quickly refresh it here in the JEDOX environment. And we have the cost center database now in here, including the dimensions. And if we look into the dimension, for example, have our time dimension, um, time dimension, um, we can start editing these dimensions, add hierarchies, and we'll do some modeling throughout the, the next few minutes now. But for now, let's just quickly maybe add a new year into on top of 2024, add a parallel hierarchy, um, for three months rolling and if we update the dimension you see how quickly we actually add um, the month to the year 2025 and also rolling months um, parallel hierarchy for reporting purposes and um, at rolling intervals um, so even the month dimension is very easy to to set up if we go and have a look here at our cube again we just quickly want to activate the audit trail because we're going to audit the activities that we are doing now in the next in the next half an hour but you can see here that we've got 5000 filled cells in this database if we go back into excel you will have a, you will be able to see here now down here that we've got roughly 109000 that's vastly more why is that the case that it's so small in 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 jdox it's because it's an all up style multi dimensional database it doesn't do these type of replicas. And because JEDOX is saved in a in memory with an OLAP style database, it's incredibly fast to query. So um, we've migrated this database <coughs> into the web. Now let's go and actually have a look and see whether we can see some of the data that we have migrated. So let's create a new Excel sheet and create a view into that data. We'll just select the database that we've just created. There's all my other databases. I'll just select the right cube. Here we've got our month dimension. So we'll pull the month into columns. We would like to see these two in the rows. Um, both of these are in the rows. The version we'd like to see also in the columns. The measure we pull into a point of view. Let's say we want to see only specific months, 21 to 23 pull those in and we would like to only see budget and actual. Um, we would also like to only see here the personal admin um, and what we can also do which is pretty cool in our taste views is that we can say show now which generates a view already here so while I am working here to show um, things or to, to, to set it, it, it populates and generates a view there. Um, and while I am now building this, I can see what is happening on the left hand side while I am building this report. Um, what I can also do is quite nice. I can choose a design, a more legacy old style design or more modern striped version. And if I'm happy with this report, because sometimes when you build a report like that, it can be more complicated and you don't want to build it every single time, you can save this report, um, save that report. And um, when you save it, you can save it as global views, which mean you can share it with everybody or as private. 
um, then it's just for yourself. Um, we now are not going to save that because this was a very quick, um, quick report we generated and let's go and paste this in. So you can see here, we've got our years. You can drill into the quarters and into the months if you want to. Um, we can actually also create a, filter, uh, a, a sort filter. Say we want to filter this by size, which means we've got the smallest here on top, the largest at the bottom. And if we drill into this, you can see also here, it's from smallest to largest. Um, you can see here we've got, we didn't select our attribute names. If we want to see the attribute names, we can say, okay, we would also like to see the attribute names. So it's more clear for us. Um, and if we now say, okay, we close this, it should be now, there we go. Um, and say we want to drill into personal because here we've also got a hierarchy um, into salaries and wages um, and say, okay, now we, it becomes very difficult for us to compare these trading versions with each other. Um, what we can do, we say, okay, add a filter. We only want to see trading. And now we can compare trading with each other. So you can see how quickly it is to generate a view, filter, sort, and um, drill into your data that you've got in a database via Excel, but you can also do this online. So what have we done now? We have migrated this database and we have accessed the data through a view. And which means like these views that we typically do with um, pivot style tables, to generate a report like this. We've generated a report with um, look, the lookup formulas by using these pivot tables. Um, these we don't need anymore. So we can actually go and delete them. We, as a matter of fact, also don't need this database anymore because we've migrated that into the cloud too. But what happens with a report like this, which you might be using for years already with your colleagues, you actually would like to reuse it and actually not lose this report because everybody got used to um, you know, entering their forecasts and budgets and comments in an Excel style report like this. You don't want to use it or you at least want to reuse it. But now with these broken formulas, you would like to recreate and relink them up to the database. And that's what we're going to do now because we've got the data in the database. We'll link these up to the database. We just need to select obviously the correct database. We've got a very clever function here that says guess arguments. And if we say paste, what is happening now, it will look for the correct references and actually paste that now in or create a pile of data formula that um, grabs the data straight from the, here you can see the pile of data formula, it grab, grabs it straight from the database into here. Um, so this live data from the database, um, we can see here we've got some values and that's because these data sets are missing. They're not in the database yet. But what we can do in our modeler, um, where we've got access to the database, same as in the online portal, um, we update the data model to have those also connected. So if we go in here, here we've got the dimensions. And remember in the online version down here in the portal, we've added the months, we've done some modeling on the time dimension. Now we're going to do some modeling and add some elements in the version because we are looking for a forecast three that element is missing and in measures we want comments. That's it. Let's close it. In here we say press F9 and now it connects it straight to the database. Here I've made, done a mistake. It's actually comment and not comments. I've made it plural. So I named it incorrectly. Let me just correct that. And I actually also know that this is not a number. This is actually a string. Okay. Let's correct that, press F9, and now we've got it directly connected to the database. Um, up here, we would like to select the cost center. This is a dead field. We'd like that also alive. And what we say, we paste an element. We say, okay, cost center group, and say, okay. Now we've got it directly connected to the cost center group, and you immediately saw how the data changes here. If I now select a different cost center group here, say for example trading it connects and selects that from the database that's only related to trading 
Now, we would actually like our colleagues when they do their budgeting to consider a specific KPI. And that KPI, we call it HR ratio. We do not want our colleagues to plan for more personal expenses for more than 30% of personal expenses on HR. We'll just copy what we typically do in Excel. We typically go and paste it in here. And now what happens here, many people will go and change, sometimes change those formulas, or you want to update the formula, make it look slightly differently. Um, you, um, but then you've got to go into multiple Excel files that are all floating around formula changes, you made a ratio from here to here, not into admin, but you'd like to rather have this KPI that you have in here managed centrally, also preferably in the database, because they, we, they, that's where it's safe. Um, so what we're going to do now is migrate this KPI into the database so that when you change it there, any changes that you do in the database on a KPI like that is accessible or goes through to every single report doesn't matter who has got it open, who's opened the report. <clears throat> so what we want to do is we want to create a new KPI or a new element, and we call it HR ratio. And um, because we know in future we're going to create a few more of these KPIs, um, let's create a parallel hierarchy, which means now in here we can add multiple KPIs in future, but this KPI now we want to calculate. Um, so let's create the calculation for that KPI. We go into our cube and create a new rule. And this new rule, we say we want the cost element HR ratio should equal to cost element personal expenses total. You can see up here there's an Excel style sort of formula, formula editor. So you can also instead continue writing your formula here instead of this easy click through. Some people will like this easy click through more. Um, some people might want to um, use it up here. Cost, uh, 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 meant I must make sure I'm not right doing a mistake. Save, okay. Now I've got this formula. You could see it updated here. Now if we close this, this formula here we don't is not in Excel anymore. We will connect it to the database. Just copy this Palo formula and paste it into this cell here. Copy paste. We just need to change the formatting into percentage. We say okay. We give it different formatting. Okay. And now We've also got this formula here as a pile of data formula and a rule in the database. If we change it in the database, it persists through to any report that is out there. Yeah, so what have we done now? We have reconnected this old Excel report, created new elements for planners to plan into, into the database, and we've created a rule, a central KPI, where we can add future KPIs for reporting in there as well into our database. Now, what we would want to do actually is not continue using this report in Excel. We would like to use this report in future online, doing using it as an online report. And let's do that. Um, so we've got this publish tool here, and this is a very cool tool. What we basically just do is choose a location, and I've got a very specific location in my models. It's called Excel Upload. I'll just overwrite it. And now it's migrating this report into the web. And it's already done it. It's already in the web. If we go and have a look in our reports section, remember we were in our modeler. We've modeled here a little bit around the database. Um, we go to our reports section and we open the Excel upload here. You will see our Excel report online as a web as a web form. Now, I can't edit my budgets. Um, I would like my colleagues to be able to edit the budgets because if we use this form, they must use it for editing it and adding the budgets. And for updating this online report, I'm not going to do it in Excel. 
this time I'm going to use our designer. Now the designer in JDOX is something very similar to, um, to Excel. It looks very similar, it feels very similar. And you'll see now here we've got this Excel style interface. We want these to be colored. Um, unlock it here, these are locked. And now we can edit the cells because we've unlocked it. As a matter of fact, because we're in here now, let's just quickly also insert a waterfall diagram because a waterfall diagram may be very helpful for our colleagues to um, plan better and more efficiently if they can see and compare their versions by a waterfall diagram during budgeting. So we've done, um, we've added this graph. We can save this. Can go back into our reports. Let's close this and open it again. And now we can edit this cell here. And if we say copy actual 2020-2021, we'll copy the actuals from the previous year into here. You will see that the waterfall diagram automatically updates as well. Now if we have this report now, um, we've got the ratio down here, we've updated this report in our designer, um, we would preferably like to actually use this report to share it with our colleagues via a workflow. Now, what we're going to do in the next few minutes is we're going to take this report that we've just migrated and send it off to a guy called Stephen. Now, Stephen, he's already got his inbox open down here, and he's going to be getting that email via a workflow. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this um, report's email link. I'm just quickly going to copy this link here. So bear with me a few seconds. Copy this report's link, and we're going to go into our settings admin configuration workflow so in this workflow monitor we create different workflow tasks we could have a sales budget a resource cost center budget and the in this workflow multiple people relevant to the sales budget <clears throat> or cost center budget will get emails to and instruction to please submit their budgets. But what we're going to do now, we're just going to use this sales workflow. Um, I'm just quickly going to edit the link because remember we want this report that we've just generated um, as a baseline and we will start the workflow. So what's happened now, we have migrated an old Excel report into the web have upgraded it and have started sharing it now with all the relevant people in all the different regions so different for different regions different authorities um, and user access rights different people will have received an email to submit their budgets and in this case we know or i know that stephen got as he's part of sales he got an email and if we look into his email inbox let's just refresh this you can see he would have got a request less than a minute ago to do his sales budget for 2023 with a direct link to that report. He can't open accidentally any other report but the one that we've just sent him. And now already, within a few minutes, we are able to start planning at this level. Now, we haven't changed access rights for Stephen here on the database. But usually what will happen when you set up your system is that if Stephen is only responsible for administration, he won't be able to access these and plan at that level. He will only be able to plan at level of administration. So let's do that with him. So he says, okay, copy actual, actual 2021. And let's say for example, let's use the planning assistant because I could, for example, add 10% on top here. So it adds 10% on top here via a short command. But the planning assistant can also help me with setting a percentage. Let's say we add another 
0.5% on top. Yeah. 5% on top. We've now got 5 on 10 is for 16, but you will see here that he's um, updated. He can say, okay, this is rent. He can add a common new offices. <clears throat> And obviously the graph down here updates simultaneously. Now if we go back and have a look, what can we actually see in Excel? Because this one is connected to the database and we can grab the information straight from the database and see what was planned by Stephen a minute ago um, and filter by administration because that's where Stephen planned. You can immediately see here's a 16%, here's his comment new offices and go into the web here. And we refresh this, it will go into here and also say administration. We've obviously got the same here. And not only that, we also have a drill history. So if I say now, okay, let me subtract here, um, subtract 10, I could write 10,000 like this, or 100,000, 100K, subtract 100K we will be able to drill into the history of who has budgeted when on this element. I can see exactly when and where somebody budgeted into this particular cell. And the same is here. If I have a look here and say, I want to see who has planned at this in the cell level, I can see the same. And if I want to see, I don't need to save this. And if I want to see actual values and I want to find out why where do these 584 come from? And I don't go into drill through. I'm able, remember in the beginning, we said in the database, take the booking references along. We've got all the individual bookings listed up here that make up, that make up this value. And obviously in the web report, if we go to the web report, we have the same here, say drill through. So what have we done? We have migrated a database. We have refreshed an old Excel report, migrated it into the cloud, and have added a few elements in here, like the HR ratio and a diagram like this that make it easier for somebody to plan. And we've added it into a workflow and sent it off to the planning colleagues, like here, Stephen, to submit his planning version or his budgets. And in the end, have everything centrally where we can drill, see comments, we can drill into the planning history. And what we want to do now is say, okay, let's, for example, assume that we've got a new account coming in here, um, which means this is dead. If we add a new account here, nobody will see it. But what we're going to do now is we're going to make this live. And we go back into our designer, the report design, and I'm just quickly going to add what we call a diner range. Now the diner range allows me to add a subset in here. Cost center group. It's not a cost. I'm looking for cost center element. No, it's, uh, it was actually cost center group. Trading. No, sorry. It was, there we go. Um, we want the aliases to be shown. Quickly, just to bear with me, I just want this hierarchy. Okay, this should do it. Okay, let's save this. Go back in here. Um, let's close this one again and open it up. And now we've got a dynamic range in here. And you can see the graph, the waterfall chart at the bottom adapts the way in which I also drill in. And this is dynamically associated to the database. So let's now go into the database and add that new element. So we say, let's say, for example, in personal costs, salaries and wages, we've got a new element in here. Let's add the element and say this is 40, 111. Um, 
And if we go back, we could also also even go back to Stephen, um, close this report again and reopen it. Stephen will now also have access to the report designed and changed in a dynamic way with the new account here. We didn't add an alias name, but with a new account added in here. Which brings me back to the same story I said earlier. Remember HR ratio, we want this formula to be managed centrally. So if there's any update to this KPI, a change in the, because some KPIs are more complex. Um, if there's any update to the change of a complex API, everybody will always see the same. If there's a change to an account, everybody will always see and look at the same structure and only be able to access those hierarchies and elements that they have access rights to. So in the end, it means that you have full control over the design of your reports and what it looks like in the end so that when you change something, um, you will have the changes always centrally managed. Um, yeah, that brings me actually already to the end of the demo. And I'm very much looking forward to um, your questions. And I would like to hand back to my colleagues so that we can have a look at your questions and yeah, um, answer those. Thank you so much, Wolfgang. Thanks for, for taking us through uh, the demo, some, uh, some great stuff. Uh, we have a few questions, uh, but uh, there's uh, also some time. So uh, please just, just ask more questions. And, uh, and we can go through them. Um, one question, uh, Wolfgang. So um, now you're actually connected to a, I think you called it a database, but an Excel sheet with, with data and, and got that into to JEDAC, started working with it, and, and that was all very simple. But of course, as you mentioned, that data originally came from a, uh, I believe you said a SAP uh, database. So could you actually also yeah. connect to the original data source or, or how would you do that? Yeah, that, that's a very good question. Um, remember we had the, 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 the exported Excel uh, SAP database in here that um, we've converted into pivot tables and we've used the pivot tables to generate this old report with VLOOKUPs. Um, now that we've migrated all of that into the database and use Palo data to access the data live, um, we've obviously now got the database in the cloud. Um, so the database sits here as cost center planning. It's the same as the Excel file name. Um, and we've got data in it. Um, but literally what I believe the question really is, we've got the database now. How about because the original database is an SAP database, how about connecting this database here to the SAP database and be able to synchronize it? Um, yes, and that is what we would typically do in our integrator. Um, now the integrator is an ETL process, um, but let's just quickly have a look into, um, into the integrator and how something like that is actually set up because it's actually not that difficult. This whole environment here in JEDOX is a no-code type of click yourself in place envi environment. And here you can see the cost center planning. While we migrated with the data modeler, the database into the database into JEDOX here, it has automatically already created what we call an integrator job. Um, so you can see here what basically happens is has taken the connection. Now the connection, if we look into the connection here, you will see that the connection actually is an Excel file connection, but that connection gets data gets extracted and gets transformed and loaded. So ETL. Um, that load <coughs> can then be scheduled in a job or creates a job. So if we look into this job here, for example, so this whole process here is what we call is the default job. We are on this default job now. Um, here you can see the connection to Excel. Here you can see an extraction. 
then from the extraction, it transforms it. In this case, there's a FT data, then there's a normalization that happens in this transform, and then there is a cube load. Um, so it has multiple um, tasks that it does, but it summarizes all of this up automatically into a job. And this job can now be scheduled in our scheduler. So it will run this job here every time that uh, the JDOX scheduler tells it to run. So you could set it to run once a week, once a day, or every hour. It really doesn't matter. But at each time it triggers the job, it will pull that data from the source. Now the source here is still an Excel file. But now that this whole job is already, or the whole ETL is already in place, all we need to do here is actually say connect to a different pre-system. In this case, we could connect to an SAP system. And this SAP system, um, or we could connect to a Dynamics 365 or a Navision, depends on where it comes from. It will recognize it because it's already got the table structure because of the database originally also originating from SAP. You can connect to SAP, um, Oracle, um, Dynamics 365, and Navision is for us a particular strong partnership. Um, I'm just thinking maybe I can just show you that a connection, how a connection to um, Dynamics 365 would work. We've got this connection wizard. Also for Salesforce, we've got a connection wizard. And these connection wiz wizards make it even easier to actually connect to an OData or a Azure data lake or a blob storage. All you really need for that connection is an application ID, source ID, URL, tenant ID from the pre-system. In this case, from Dynamics 365, you get this. You can test the connection. So what it does once you've entered this correctly, it will say, yes, successfully tested. It's tested this now live. And then you can say, okay, you want to pull in a general ledger from your Dynamics 365 or SAP, in this case, Dynamics 365. And it's got really nice steps where you get the cubes out of the pre-system. You create them on JDOC side, um, the dimensions, um, the di here are the 365 dimensions, the JDOX dimensions, you can rename them, you can add additional dimensions, and ultimately end you ultimately in the end you build. I'm not going to do that now, uh, but you actually build the database out. Um, so connecting up to pre-systems, especially with our wizards, makes it incredibly easy. But in our integrator with all other connections, we are we are literally industry leading with the amount of connections that we can integrate with. Um, so yes, to answer the question, George, <laughs> you can obviously connect it to your pre-system. Pre that was a, uh, a very elaborate answer to, uh, to the question, Wolfgang. But a, <laughs> it, was a a good, it was a good question. <laughs> yeah, and also a very good answer. So, uh, so that's, uh, that's perfect. And uh, yeah, if you have more questions, uh, please just uh, keep them coming. Uh, in a, in a few minutes, we'll probably run out of time, but uh, we'll certainly get back with the with with answers uh, to you. Um, I think I will just uh, change uh, screen here real quickly. Um, and uh, yeah, just again say uh, thanks a lot uh, to to all of you for for participating in this webinar. I hope that you you got the a good glimpse of uh, how you can uh, use uh, JEDAX to avoid Excel chaos and to simplify your planning processes. If you want to learn more about JEDAX, understand how we can uh, maybe help your business, your organization, then we'll of course always be happy to uh, yeah, set up a individual session or, or call with you. So please do reach out to, to us. Uh, here's uh, our contact info, my own email, you're very welcome to, to reach out to me if, uh, if you want to, to know more. So again, thanks a lot for participating and uh, have a really great day. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.